Greetings from Mumbai, India. I'm Nupur Kapoor Nerulkar and I work in Bombay Hospital in Mumbai. We have published this paper in the IGLP and my co-authors are Zainab Nagri and Diksha Agarwal. These are some of the classifications which already exist as far as sulcus is concerned. Uh, with sulcus vergature, some of the classifications have mentioned the depth of the sulcus. However, this is not the case with sulcus vocalis. So we have proposed a classification of sulcus, which is specifically after ML scopy, where you have a palpation possibility, subepithelial infiltration. And this is very clearly defined as to what is the length of the sulcus and what is the depth of the sulcus. Therefore, a type A, B, and C sulcus are the sulci which are more than 50% of the length of the membranous vocal fold, with a depth into the SLP being A, into the ligament being B, and into the muscle being C. Similarly, D, E, and F sulci are similar to focal pit, where the length of the sulcus is less than 50% of the membranous vocal fold. When the depth is into the SLP, it is D, into the ligament, it is E, and into the muscle, it is F. When there is a polyp or a cyst or keratin within the sulcus, then it can be denoted as KCP in brackets. When they are associated mucosal bridges, that can be mentioned as MB. Therefore, to give an example, on the left side of your screen, what you see is on the right vocal fold, there is a type A and a type D sulcus. On the left vocal fold, there are two type A sulci. On the right side of your screen, you see another patient who's got a right in bracket P sulcus because the polyp is emanating from within the type A sulcus. And on the left vocal fold, there's a simple type A sulcus. Here we have another patient who has a sulcus on the left vocal fold with a polyp emanating from it. When the polyp is excised, we can see that the depth of the sulcus is only in the SLP. And since the length of the sulcus is less than 50% of the membranous vocal fold, it is a left D sulcus with P in brackets. Here, however, is a sulcus which would be classified as a left B sulcus because the length is more than 50% of the vocal fold and the depth is into the ligament. So our study methodology really was in two parts. The first part was estimating the various type of sulca we found over 30 month period after MLS. And the second part of our study was to document the results of a surgical technique known as laser assisted sulcus release surgery or the LASR technique. So the results of the first part of our study was that we had 339 patients who operated for benign glottic lesions and 10.6% of these patients had a sulcus. What is interesting is that 61.7% of these sulci were only diagnosed during MLS and were missed during stroboscopy. So this is a busy slide, but it gives an idea of exactly how many sulci we had in the various types which we have proposed. The most common were A, where we have 37 sulci. And though we see that type C and F have zero sulci, this was within our study duration. Outside of this duration, we have seen such deep sulci. The results of the second part of our study really was out of these 36 patients with sulci, there were seven patients who had superficial sulci, that is a type A and D. And th those which had no associated lesions were selected for surgery. So we had operated on out of 17 such sulci on 14. 9A and 5D, which underwent LASR. We made sure there are no associated lesions so that the improvement is specifically because of this surgery and the subsequent therapy. The surgery performed was with a CO2 laser in the scanning mode. So the AccuBlade was used with a length of 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters with a depth of one, which is 250 microns. And the cuts were made at 90 degrees to the lip of the sulci so as to release the sulci, whether it's a type A or a type D sulcus, we did operate bilaterally also. So this is just a short video clip to demonstrate the surgery being performed, palpation. Here we have two right vocal fold type A and two type A on the left vocal fold also. The subepithelial infiltration technique is being performed on the left vocal fold, which makes the sulci more apparent and here we have the uh, uh, acublade being used at 0.5 millimeter length at being uh, cutting the lips of the sulci at 90 degrees to it we also 
try to make sure that the distance between the cuts is at least 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters. And we do not um, go into the anterior commissure, so we respect it at all times, though we may do bilateral surgery also. So the similar process is being performed even on the right side. The idea is when we're operating with this LASR technique for the superficial sulci, the idea is that the secondary epithelization, which is going to take place, should take place in a fashion where it doesn't again cause a furrow or a depression. So, um, of course, we allow time for healing and then give voice therapy. So, this is a pre op strobe of a patient showing a spindle shaped phonatory large gap and no mucosal wave whatsoever. Let's see the post op strobe. <laughs> So here we see the phonatory gap is decreased dramatically and the mucosal amplitude was quite good. This is a pre-op voice of the patient. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is the post-op voice. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are the demographics. All seven patients actually were females and we had only identified three of the patients with sulci on stroboscopy, the rest was under GA. What is highlighted in yellow were actually the sulci which were operated upon. Uh, the results of our surgery showed the Grava score had a statistically significant improvement from 11.28 to 3.7. There was an improvement in stroboscopy also where ventricular hyperadduction uh, went away in all the patients postoperatively and the phonatory gap either was absent postoperatively or was uh, remarkably less. Uh, so uh, the maximum phonation time increased from 7.4 seconds to 13.1 seconds, which was again statistically significant. And now if we compare the classification systems, adding on our system, this is how it would fit in, where there is um, definition of the length as well as the depth of each type of sulcus, both in the linear group as well as in the so-called focal pit group. So in conclusion, microlaryngeal examination with palpation of the vocal folds revealed a sulcus in 61.7% of stroboscopically undiagnosed vocal folds in our study, in our center. The incidence of the sulci was maximum in type A with almost 60%, followed by type D with almost 28%. And in our limited series of seven patients, a significant improvement in MPT and Grabas was observed at three months. Um, however, this, um, the stroboscopy improvement which was seen did not always match a vocal improvement. Now, this is a pilot study of 10 vocal folds with sulca that were operated with LASR in seven patients, and more work is needed in this area to make a definitive conclusion.